Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So I am beyond stoked today because I am finally picking up my brand new 2021 Ford Raptor 37 package. Um, and I kind of hinted at it in my previous videos at how long it could have potentially took to actually receive it. Uh, and that was going to be anywhere from six to nine weeks as they had to mail in all the paperwork to my state's DMV and with COVID and all that stuff still being a backlog within, uh, you know, mailing and paperwork for my state. It was looking to be about that six to nine weeks. However, they did something pretty cool. And, and I'm going to explain why this is even the case for this particular dealership. You know, Massachusetts is very, very, very unique when it comes to how they sell to people out of state. And I'll walk through that here in a second. But what they ultimately did is they contacted a Ford dealership out there in my home state and overnighted all of my purchase paperwork and all the, all the, for registration and whatnot and the plates, they overnighted it to the Ford dealership and worked an arrangement to where they actually went in person in my home state to the DMV and actually did the exchange in person. Uh, that way they can get the plates in hand rather than trying to wait for the whole mail piece of it to happen, which would take forever. And so they did the transaction in person with the DMV for me and then they overnighted it back to Mark Hub Ford here. So super, super grateful for the GM here to have worked that for me. Uh, as they kind of they kind of surprised me with that, I was just expecting it to take that nine weeks, which you know all that to say, it's a bummer that that even had to be the case, of course. Uh, but that's not their fault. That's just how Massachusetts is and their rules, and they're pretty strict with it. Um, like I said, I've purchased so many different vehicles from so many different states. Every single one I purchased in the past, and there's a lot. They've always issued a temp tag, like a 30-day temp tag, sometimes a 10-day temp tag. Um, and more often than not, they'll even send you more, a couple more while you're waiting for the place to come in or until you get it actually registered. So that was the first time I've ever experienced this ever. So super unique. If you want more details on, just Google it and then you can learn up on it. But yeah, huge surprise to me, but bottom line, very grateful that they're able to work uh, a special arrangement for me to get it sooner. Cause it would have sucked to have waited nine weeks to actually drive this home. And I know there's a lot of people out there who are waiting for their Raptors and you know, people who have put their orders in months and months ago. Um, however, they just put in orders, right? So they put maybe a deposit down and they'd have a build order. They didn't fully pay for it. So from my unique case was I actually paid for it fully and then I had to wait to actually drive it home, which is a very, uh, kind of a, it's kind of a crummy feeling, right? But bottom line, here we are, just really two and a half weeks later and gonna be driving it home. So I wanted to, show a video here as I'm doing my, my actual pickup of it, as this will be the cleanest that it is ever going to be in its lifetime. So I'll do an in-depth walk around, and then of course we'll hop in the interior here, and I'll show you some of the details again. But I am just super stoked. And in code orange, depending on the videos, depending on the photos you look at, I mean, I don't know, it always looks different to me, but in person, it really does look very much orange and i personally i love it normally i've never gravitated to bright colors but this i just i think it's amazing so super excited for it it's a 37 package so you get this the decals back here which i've never been a fan of this stuff either however i love the fact that it serves doubles as a as a paint protector so this is a, a topographical uh, map of course of uh, the Baja, uh, the Baja race with the checkpoints throughout it, which is pretty neat. So technically, you can kind of see the line here. I think some people, sorry for the detail here, but I want to, uh, maybe people who are trying to buy this might be interested to see exactly where that, that decal line is. And up here, it follows this line here, the fender line, fender flare. So, super stoked. And one thing I'm gonna be quick to do, and I won't beat this to death in this video, but I'm gonna debate on a couple different options for actually getting this protected in here. And maybe even doing, of course, an undercoating, um, an undercarriage uh, protectant as well. But in here, this will be my first step, and I'll likely line exit. But I think, if they haven't already, they should have the, um, the wheel well liners uh, pre-cut. I just think it almost looks unfinished when you look in here and see the body color. Um, what else? It's going to kind of show you all the details throughout it. And a unique thing to this, which 
contributes to the fact of it sounding glorious is, let's see if we can get an eye on it, there you go. See how the exhaust kind of loops around right there? That is, I think is what they termed the, the trombone portion of the exhaust, which gives it such, such a mean growl, especially for a V6. We're used to these not sounding that great, but I think they truly stepped it up. As for the wheels, I absolutely love it. This is a large reason why I actually was really shooting for a 37 package over the 35. Not so much the tires. Uh, of course, it's cool that they're bigger tires, but I think these wheels really look fantastic. And, but these happen to be my favorite or second favorite tires out there. You guys know I like the Nitto Ridge Grapplers as well. Got our Fox suspension. There you go. Front dash plate, skid plate here. Has slightly a better approach angle compared to the Gen 2. And some rigid industry fog lights. And just the caps on the, on the inward ones here. Let me know what your thoughts are on the, the new headlight housing. I think I like Gen 2 a little bit better just because it has that little bit more of the C shape. It's not just a you know, a block here of the headlight, or there's a little bit more of a design with the previous one, but I love this LED strip. And of course, you've seen it flicker on the frame right here on the camera, but it is steady. I do think they knocked it out of the park with the front end, you know, expanding the, the front forward grill here. I think that looks awesome. You know, kind of connecting a little bit more to the Gen 1, in my opinion. Larger marker lights. So this is a Department of Transportation requirement given the width of the vehicle. So you always see this on like F-250s, F-350s, typically up top, right? You get it here on the side too, but these are much larger, much larger than um, the Gen 2 there. Again, you got a little bit more of that topical uh, map here up top. So I'm curious when I get the paint protection, which I already arranged, the, the PPF, I'm getting Expel, I think Expel Ultimate is what they call it. The best Expel, I'll be getting that put on the entire front end. So from this, from this line forward to include the A-pillars here. So I'm doing that. So I wonder, I think they just go over it. I believe that's just what they do there. I don't think they cut specifically around that. So it'll go totally over it. So this has a lot more dimension to it compared to the, the Gen 2, but again, I think the Gen 2s look great too, the, the side vent there on the fender. I actually already picked up some rock blocks, mud flaps. So I have those at home waiting for me and I thought I was gonna have to hold on to them for much longer before actually putting them to use. So I'll be putting those on here, hopefully within a week. Have a look down the side there. The bed liner, of course, and I won't be able to show it to you in this video because we're a little too close to the back here. There's the uh, so normally in a Gen 2, it kind of goes upward and actually fits, uh, you know, matches the tail lights perfectly. And whereas now it's just kind of a rectangle straight across, both look good, um, it's just a matter of preference, I suppose. Um, another thing on a Gen 2 is the actual fender flare. So the Gen 2 is a little bit more streamlined when it comes to the flare top. Um, so this actually extends out you know, about an inch, a little bit more than an inch or so up top the flat portion right here. Whereas on the Gen 2, it kind of goes straight up flush to the actual paint in the body of the vehicle. I don't get that sweet one piece glass roll up and down window like you get in the Tundra. So this is a little bit of a pitfall by comparison. Get a back seat first. I just, I'm super impressed. I didn't think I was gonna be this impressed, honestly. Uh, the first time I actually felt, in, you know, sitting one, sat in one, and, and seen one of these in person, a 37 package is this one. You know, you just don't see too many of them floating around at this point in time anyway. But that'll change as they kind of clear up the, ship, the, the chip shortage, excuse me. Um, you know, kind of clear out the, those open lots that are full of Raptors right now. Panel roof, I love it. It scares me a little bit just because 
historically, these have always kind of been a trouble issue for, for raptors. Um, hopefully they've gotten that figured out at this point. I personally love this Rhapsody Blue um, Alcantara leather interior. I think it looks great. I was nervous about it because, I mean, blue and orange, it's kind of, if you have any, any sense of fashion, you know those don't typically go together that well. But I think it looks awesome, especially when you have the, the orange stitching, of course, throughout it. Uh, all weather mat back here. our back charging and air vents here and heated seats. And this, Mrs. Untamed loves the fact that it has plenty of cup holders. That's one thing she always missed from our, our previous Raptor. When we jump to the Tundra, you get more in this one. Does that look there? Just look at the finishes on this and this it's just, it feels, it feels premium, which is kind of crazy. This, uh, yeah, you can either, either love or you hate it, but I think this looks so much better than the, the super faux carbon that was in the Shelby, uh, the Baja that I had. Yeah. Exhibit A, you can't really see it. You see the top of it. <laughs> All right, so looking at the interior, Here's your seat controls. Okay, we got Ford spelled out over here. Nice metal finish surrounding the, the hard plastic there, of course. You get the Ford Performance stamp, the badge right here, as you had in the previous um, the Gen 2 there. Got speakers, Bang Elson speakers throughout, including within the headrest, which is really sweet. In. Get a grab handle. It's not always the case. And I just here I'll back it out a little bit for you guys. I am just beyond excited for this and nervous, right? I mean, it's new tech, and uh, there's always a chance for it to get wonky, especially being a Ford product. But that does not take away from my excitement for it right now, and that's why we have a warranty on the thing, right? There's our controls here. They're pretty straightforward. I like that. Um, it doesn't require you to actually engage the, the, the screen here in the system within it. Uh, I think for Sync 4, Sync 4, I believe is what it is. It's a full digital uh, display up here, which again, another thing to be maybe nervous about long term, but you guys know me, me the word long term, long term doesn't really uh, line up too often, but that is super sweet, very responsive quick to go through and there's gonna be so much more videos that I provide you guys of this of course but I'm just doing the the initial snapshot highlights for you in this video there's your steering wheel controls there same auxiliary switches that you had in the gen 2 up top is where you have your uh, your, your banging Olsen speakers up there as well as you know up top and there's a really sweet metal finish to it which it looks and feels premium look there in the back seat and a little bit more of that carbon like material here which i like i think it looks fantastic along with the the metal aluminum finishes throughout so yeah It's a little party trick here that we've all seen a million times, which, yeah, I don't know, I mean, maybe a little gimmicky, but who knows? I mean, I think we can get some good use out of this, and this pops up over to make a little table, as you all have seen, I'm sure. But pretty cool. You know, and you're doing your homework assignments in here, you know, eating Panda Express in your brand new truck, which I don't want Mrs. Untamed to hear that, because she might think it's okay. But yeah, this is... This is super sweet, guys, and I'm just beyond excited to get, get behind the wheel and actually start driving at home. It's going to be a long six and a half hour drive, but I'm sure I'll have a smile on my face for the bulk of it. But, you know, lots more to come, a lot more to show you. you know, happy to provide my, my ownership experience and all that fun jazz with you. So I guess as I wrap up this video, I'll leave it with 
a shout out to, so I said it incorrectly before, it's Marcotte, Marcotte Foreman. I always said Marcotti for some reason, but uh, it's Marcotte Ford and up here in Holyoke, Massachusetts. So a huge shout out to them. They really did bend over backwards to, to make this as streamlined as possible, given given their requirements, which, which sucks, I get it, but they really did their best to make this as fast as possible. So I'm super appreciative of that. And my sales rep, his name is Leo Seminov. So if you wanna reach out to Leo here at Marcotte Ford, definitely do that. Uh, very professional and very easy and very responsive to work with. So I'll wrap it up there, guys, as I'm gonna get behind the wheel and actually start driving home. So I appreciate you watching. And, if you're interested in more Raptor content, continue to stick around. Appreciate you watching. Till next time.